Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. It's a reading according to Matthew. Sorry about that. (laughs) Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in her heart, in in his heart. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good the Lord all that you owe. But I say to you, do not swear at all. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. In today's reading, is the, uh, it's a very simple teaching that Christ is trying to tell, to teach us, that basically God reads the heart. This is basically what the idea is, is that God needs, you know, everything is in the intention of what you do things. The law, the law in themselves, like if you take the Ten Commandments, and, you know, as such, they are good. I mean, it's a good thing. Don't kill, don't commit adultery, don't say lie, and all these things, you know. So you, someone can, you know, live righteously by avoiding these things, you know, avoiding, avoid to kill people, avoid to say lies, avoid, you know, all these things. But Jesus always raised the bar. He's always asking more of us. Why? Because he doesn't want just to, he, don't, he doesn't want us to be just righteous. He wants us to be saint. He wants us to be saints. He wants us to go to heaven. He just, he's, you know, and he's trying to raise the bar and to say, listen, it's much more than just avoiding and don't kill people. It's in the heart. What are your intentions in the heart? Maybe you don't want to commit adultery, but you look at the women and you see, and the drool coming down, and say, well, sorry, but that's wrong. That's already wrong. Why? Because in your heart, you're already thinking bad. So it's not just about action. It's what's going on in the heart. This is the reason why, you know, Jesus raised the bar. He wants us to be saint. It just, it doesn't, it's not enough to be just righteous, which is already a pretty good step because, you know, already in the world today, you know, I mean, pretty much all Ten Commandments are broken all over the place. By the way, you know that there's a story saying that Moses is the only one who broke all Ten Commandments at once. You know that, right? If you know the Bible, you know what I'm talking about. Very good. So, so, but the point is that we, need, we, sh- we shouldn't be afraid to raise the bar in our lives, to accept the challenge that God is giving to us. It's a bit like, you know, you think, I mean, I make a joke about the Super Bowl, but when you look at the Super Bowl, all these teams that goes all these, you know, the best teams in the world, those who, those who go to the finals and all these things, 
How did they get there? They get there because they are unafraid to face their weaknesses. So they know what their weaknesses are, and they work on it. They spend hours training and, and doing drills so that, they, they, so that their weaknesses can be overcome. That's how you, you become champion. That's how you become the best. You know, you have to be humble enough just to recognize where are your weakness. Okay, our defense is really good, but our offense, we are not, you know, we are not doing any touchdown. We, we win the games by, just by field goals. You know, we're not going to go far if we keep on going like this. We need to learn our passes and to, and to be more strategic and so on. How are we going to do that? Train, train, training. In spiritual life, it's a little bit like that too. You know, you can win by scoring, by sc being righteous, you know, by sc scoring field goals. But God wants us to, to crush the enemy. He wants us to win by, you know, 36 to 0. That's what he wants. And how you do it? By purifying your heart. Purify your heart. So I think what God is inviting us, and also from the first reading we had today, what God is trying to tell us is, that, is, listen, take time, take time to analyze your heart. Analyze who you are. What are my intentions? By the way, those who don't know, who doesn't know me, probably you already know this. I'm French-Canadian, just in case you... You wonder, where's the funny accent from? All right, good. So, so the point is that, you know, this is one of my weaknesses. I'm working on it. Okay, very good. All right. So, so the point is that, so the, the idea is that to analyze your heart, what, to have purity of heart when I do things, when I make choices. And that needs reflection, prayers discernment, wisdom. And all these can be asked in your prayer. But it has to be trained. It has to be trained because the temptation is constantly to look for ourselves, just to look for your own belly button. Your own belly button. <laughs> you know, it's that little thing is so important for many of us. But you know what happens when you spend your, your days looking at your belly button? You know what happens when you spend your days like this? That you don't see what's coming up. You don't see what's coming up. The only thing I see is my belly button. And so I forget about everything that is around me and try to walk like this for a whole day long without hitting a wall at some point. It's just like you're like this and then poof, you know? That's what's gonna happen if I spend my whole life looking like this. God wants to you know, to look ahead. You like the, uh, you like that, right? Very good. So, so, <clears throat> right? So, yeah, the sound effects are always good to help. <laughs> Purity of heart. Purity of heart. So, so, and that's my invitation. That's my invitation for this week. Right? And there's no age for that. Everything you do, doesn't matter your... <clears throat> You're still going to school, or you go to work, you're in retirement. doesn't matter who, who and where you are. You, it's important to learn to read the heart. What are my real intentions? And if I know that is something wrong, make a decision. Make a decision. It's very, and, and, and it's training. It demands training. Because human nature will always will drag you toward the evil, toward the easiest, toward the, the, the most attractive, which very often is not necessarily the best things. They are not necessarily the best things. So we need to, we need to be careful with that. And ask God in, his, in this Mass, ask Him that grace, that strength of will and wisdom to make the right choice according to the heart, but really according to the heart. Always looking for holiness. 
To be righteous, for sure, definitely. And I hope we, we can at least be righteous. But let's be holy. Because people, people today, the world is in thirst of holiness. We need holy people around us. People who inspire us by their sacrifice, by, by their charity, by who they are, really. And so let us be that seed, that little light for the people of the world, you know, by being pure of heart, by being pure of heart. Remember what Jesus said uh, in, the, in the, his discourse of the mountain. Now, blessed are the pure of heart. They will see God. That's the promise we have. When we are pure in what we do, we see God in the people we'll deal with, in the circumstances we face, in everything. We learn to see God. So may it be for each one of us and always to strive for that holiness that God wants for each one of us as well.